Hey, people. Did, well, um, I think it's 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 moving quite quickly. So what I propose that we do is, in the meantime, as people are logging in, um, so this webinar is um, uh, this panel discussion we're very excited about is uh, digitalization on an AI. Uh, we are going to be focusing on transforming solar project to execution and asset management. And uh, us with this, this webinar is organized by the Middle East Solar Industry Association. So I will take advantage of uh, this, uh, this opportunity to tell you just quickly who we are. Um, we are the oldest um, and probably one of the most well-known um, non-for-profit association focused on the solar industry, bringing together uh, the Middle East and North Africa. Um, we have um, we have over 80 company members, some of which are are on this panel today, yeah, such as Huawei uh, and Aqua. And uh, we are um, really happy to be hosting these webinars. You can find this webinar and other on our YouTube channel. Um, link here. No, I'm, this is this is not a really a thing. There will be no link, but we will be sharing with all of you any way you can connect with us. So today on this webinar, and I will start um, with our dear uh, Hiba Derneka, uh, who's the director and head of digital software factory for portfolio management at Aqua Power. Um, she uh, is here today along with uh, Giuseppe Ferraro, who's the director of digitalization, renewables optimization team at Green Power Monitor. Mr. Mohamed El, El Khatib, who's the regional manager MEA at Above Surveying. Um, co co correct me if I'm if uh, it, above surveying or just above above. It's the same. It's okay, above. Right. We are trying okay. to go more above. You, know. you like to book to go above. Okay, that works. And then finally, uh, actually not really not finally, but you know, last but not least, Mr. Scott Nichols, uh, regional sales manager at at three uh, E. And finally, uh, our wonderful moderator today is going to be Mr. Rizwan Razak. Uh, Chief Technology Officer at Huawei uh, that I will hand uh, the baton to for today. Great, thank you, Hint, and I hope everybody is doing well uh, this morning or this afternoon, depending on whereabouts you are uh, in the world. And if you are listening back to the the, the, the webinar, uh, welcome. Um, so my name is Rizwan. I'm the uh, CTO for the Middle East and Africa region. And as uh, described, we'll be talking about digitalization and AI. So let's go into the, the, the first uh, specific topic, why digitalization and AI uh, matter in solar assets themselves. So in that regards, I think the first um, would be uh, Hiba, if that is uh, uh, possible for you to just answer that. Why digitalization and AI matter in the solar assets themselves? Assalamu alaikum, good morning. Thank you for this uh, uh, opportunity to discuss along with uh, with my colleagues on digitalization for the uh, for the solid industry. So let's start with digitalization is across all technologies and all our life, uh, day to day life, and in focus one where for the. Um, uh, for the solar industry, the uh, the digitalization has uh, will, uh, will boost the efficiency and the uh, uh, maintenance and the productivity of the uh, of the solar uh, plant. The, the digitalization will start right from the during the construction and will continue to the operations. So it will help to uh, have full um, chain of improvement throughout the uh, right from the uh, like bid award or like uh, development of the uh, like theoretical development of the uh, of the energy uh, the plant up to during the life cycle of the operation maintenance so it covers everything from a like we will discuss later on about like BIM, we'll discuss about like predictive maintenance for performance and so on so digitalization is the key moving forward to uh, to uh, to uh, to monitor and get benefit of the uh, a low cost, we call it low cost uh, uh, plant energy production uh, across the uh, life cycle of the uh, of the power generation of the plant. Great, thank you, Heba, for that. So we'll head over to uh, Mohammed now uh, from above and uh, your uh, point of view on on this particular topic of of how AI and digitalization matter in the solar. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thanks for the one for the question. 
Let me first start maybe talking about digitalization in general. What is digitalization? Because we hear it a lot. We don't really know sometimes when to use it. Digitalization in our business is to converge some work, manual, manual work or physical presence on site into a virtual model where we can manage it remotely and benefit from this data for anything like in the, in the maintenance or in the construction. But most important is to know what to digitalize. We always talk about digitalization, but we need to know what to digitalize in our business. So even before construction, adding to HIBA, we can start digitalization. And if you start in the development, we can even digitalize. If you do the topography with a drone, for example, on a geospatial uh, map, you can digitalize the tree or any hills for uh, an accurate uh, shading analysis. So we need to know the object, the parameter uh, that we need to digitalize. How to fill it in with data is very, uh, is very important. And then use AI at the end for the data analysis. Take this uh, webinar today as, as an example. It's a seminar digitalized. The object are the location, us, our voices. And the AI is when, 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 when someone is speaking, you have a highlight on his uh, square. Back to solar, why digitalization is, is needed, I can tell you the whys. First of all, we are seeing lately a big growth in, in the solar industry. Assets are moving from 25 years to 40 years. And those uh, projects are divided in multiple geographies all over the world. We have also a shortage of labor. So to manage all this big asset around the world, you need more people. So uh, to manage it uh, in an easy way, you need to have a digital tool. Of course, I insist here to have a user-friendly digital tool for because not all labels are having the same up-to-date uh, experience. You need also to have transparency between all the stakeholders and all parties related to the, to the project. There, the digitalization will, will play a big role because it's very reliable. And yeah, and the cost, for sure, the cost is very needed. And also, the old school deliverable are not, you know, should be up-to-date, you know, should match with the new PV modeling softwares and digital twins. That's why digitalization can manage and have a good quality assurance. Great, thank you, Mohammed, for that. So, just to kind of interrupt between uh, the, the speakers here now, uh, from Huawei, uh, we're providing uh, with um, over eight years uh, in in Huawei. Myself, uh, we've seen a lot of development in the inverter market, and within that, we brought out uh, digitalized tools such as the IV curve diagnostics. So, this is already uh, becoming incorporated in in the component selection in the solar projects themselves. Now, I'll hand it over to um, GPM, uh, Green Power Monitoring, to give their insight in the uh, topic of digitization and how AI uh, takes in the solar assets. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, and thanks uh, to everyone for joining today and spending some time with us. Some time with us. <clears throat> in terms of uh, optimization, yeah, we, we've been doing uh, many things in uh, looking at how AI can optimize solar energy generation. Uh, one of our main focuses is on losses identification, um, but we've also been spending a lot of time on data classification and standardization, and now we'll be discussing that later on. Uh, most of the times we we take data for granted, but in reality, that's, that's not always the case. Um, other things that uh, we feel are very important in uh, the area of AI and uh, digitalization is performance benchmarking. So looking at how assets are performing are performing against each other and give indications on uh, whether there are any issues based on that. Um, other things that probably we take for granted, but resource data cleaning. Uh, so offering a clean source of reference data for performance assessment is, is something that uh, most of the people take for granted, but it's not as trivial as it might sound. Uh, resource forecasting and weather forecasting is another one where um, um, AI, uh, machine learning play a very, very important role. Um, last but not least, what I want to add is that uh, we we think about uh, renewables as uh, digitalized uh, um, industries. I would argue that they are digitized, but not very well digitalized. And the difference is that uh, we use the digital means, but most of the times, not all the stakeholders in the value chain are connected. And digitalization comes when all the stakeholders offering different added values to the industry come together to digitalize the all of the industry. And that's something that is a work in progress for the whole industry. Great, thank you for that. 
So we'll see what uh, we have from Scott now, uh, from your, your point of view on, on the topic of how the digitization and AI matter in solar. Good morning or good afternoon to, to some people. Uh, it depends on where you are. So, so thank you for the invitation on behalf of 3E. So from a digitization point of view, 3E are very much front and center. So for, for nearly 25 years in, in the renewable industry, um, expert services and digitization is what we do every day. So anything from an idea, even before a, a project development or a bankability study, uh, yield assessment, et cetera, all the way through to digitization of asset ownership, asset management and, and analyzing data. It's really about removing that manual process every day in everybody's lives. We do it every day. Uh, sometimes by default, without realizing we still do that. Um, but it's really about removing those inefficiencies, re removing the, 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 the cost or the cost associated with manual processes and really using data. So we all use data every day in, in the solar industry world, um, sometimes efficiently, sometimes inefficiently. But it's really about that granular data in terms of you know, the yield performance, the expectation life of the assets over time, um, the longevity of, of, of behavior of assets is the important part of life. So when we all fixate on certain parts of our industry, whether you're construction, whether you're implementation, whether you're managing or maintaining assets, every single part of that journey is some form of digitization. Um, and that's really what it's about. And I'm happy to be here on that call. Great. Thank you, Scott, for that. So let's dive into a bit more detail of, of this particular topic and, and look at uh, what kind of data do we actually need in order to make the, the, the assets uh, more digitalized and what kind of granularity of data we require, whether it is at, at, at the um, inception stage of the project or whether it is once it's commissioned and handed over. Um, so first of all, I'll, I'll hand it over to uh, GPM on, on their point of view on, on the question of, what kind of uh, plant data um, would be required uh, from the projects themselves? Uh, yeah, I would probably point out that, yeah, the data, data is the key, is the fuel of, uh, of digitalization or digitization, how we want to call it. And uh, from our point of view, monitoring and predictive analytics is, is, there is a variety of data. But what I would like to point out is, in terms of the data that are supplied from the assets nowadays, um, there's no doubt that there is most of the of the data that are, are needed to ensure that we can predict life, we can optimize and we can do a good job uh, using digitalization uh, to our advantage. What we'll probably argue is that the categorization of data, so knowing what data is referring to is, is quite uh, is quite a challenge. Uh, if you just consider the variety of um, the size and the variety of the of the devices that are deployed, especially in um, in the mineral region, uh, where plants are becoming gigantic. And uh, if you don't really know what each data is for and where it's coming from, you might struggle along the the, the, the multiple steps that are needed to, to deploy the assets. So from, from building to maintenance and to optimize. Just imagine that you think that, uh, you know, some data is coming from a specific device, then you send out um, operation and maintenance uh, fleets and, uh, and they realize that they got completely wrong data and, and that the, the panels or the devices they were trying to, to, to replace are completely wrong. And then they have to start wandering around and trying to identify what it is. If you consider that all of this is usually happening in very extreme conditions, then you can imagine what kind of challenge we've got up there. Definitely. So thank you very much for, for that. So let's uh, go over to Mohammed on, on the uh, pre-construction uh, stage on the, the kind of surveying data that you would be um, requiring and what you feel from your perspective is the important um, data required in order to make the assets more digitalized. Thank you. Okay, um, maybe let's go back a little bit uh, 20 years back. Okay, and talk about uh, the tools that we had uh, at that time. It was, if you want to do any site survey, you need to go on site. You had a mobile, it was not a smartphone yet. You had maybe the A4 uh, layout and a camera, if the mobile camera was not good. 
So the, the, the site survey is to find any deviation at the beginning or any problem or anything. Uh, this was the data that is needed. You don't, you don't have any energy, any energy during uh, the, the installation, during the construction. You have still the construction to be done. So this was the tool before 20 years. Maybe after 10 years, we had, uh, I don't want to, to say the name of the application, but we had the chatting uh, application where you can just uh, share picture. But there was a limitation in the data and also this connection of all these uh, tools. Nowadays, I can just give a direct example so, so, so it, it will be more clear, a direct application. If you are on site, having a digital uh, tool, which is in this case, uh, the smartphone application and the portal, both application are having the project as auto mosaic, geolocated, overlaid with the CAD drawing, geolocated, digitalization each object, again, not each object, each relevant object, like the panel, the inverter, and everything you need to digitalize, transformer, all geolocated. So if you are on site, you just can do the survey, find anything, take a picture. In this case, the, the data is the picture. You need, this is the information that we need to uh, deliver to, I don't know, to your uh, boss or to the APC or to the developer, because they are all on the same platform, related to the same uh, platform. You can create a task, assign it to someone. This someone can be anyone, okay, that has to have access to this platform, okay? And uh, the problem will be solved remotely, faster, and uh, you will save a lot of time. So here you can engage with the information that you have on site easily, connected with other parties, and uh, of course have more efficient time. Than, than before. So yeah, the data during construction is this, I, I mean, I'm not coming from a PC background, but I think this is what, what needs to be done. Definitely, yeah. So I can definitely agree with you on that, that the technology has already adopted uh, over the years where, you know, tools such as Google Earth, for example, how we are able to just- Exactly. Uh, drill down into uh, project locations and really assess what we'll be uh, really reviewing um, on site. So again, Anything physical required on site can be reduced, obviously from a safety aspect, et cetera. I want to add something here. Exactly, and you just gave me an idea. Another source of data during the construction is like using other technologies like drone. So if you have a drone over this, uh, this plant, it will collect data of the construction. So again, the first layer will be the auto mosaic geolocated and the last layer will be the CAD drawing. In between, you will have every time what's happening on site, maybe before each milestone. So this is another source of data we can, where you can really track what's happening on site remotely. Imagine you are here in, in Dubai, you have a project in Africa. Uh, so you need someone to deliver this data for you in a reliable way. So Definitely. yeah, this is another source of data. Thank you, Mohammed, for that. So I'll... I'll uh... I'll look at it from a different perspective now. So from Aquapower and, and from Hiba, what was your take on, on this particular topic? Okay, so let me uh, tell you our, uh, our point of view because we are like asset developers. At the same time, we have Nomag as the operation maintenance. And luckily I was part, like I was the head of a monitoring and prediction center for Nomag. And now I moved to Aqua to digitalize the construction phase. So I have the two pictures uh, to be seen. And uh, to second Muhammad on the part of construction, the digital digitalization will work on several aspects. As you mentioned, you will have a platform and all the stakeholders, especially EPC, uh, on engineers, everyone will have access to that platform. And if follow the workflows uh, in the same platform and all the communication will be there and we'll have the real progress. And as you mentioned, whether satellite images or, uh, or drones will, will assure or confirm the real progress when it comes to uh, the, uh, the uh, updates or reporting on where do we stand in terms of like uh, construction, you know, and we know exactly at the early stage whether we are on the right track to, to toward commissioning dates or we have delays. Now the technology is much more ad in advanced. We have some, we work on capabilities to even through drones, do the quality inspection. 
instead of asking people to go and do the uh, war, ro roam around, especially for solar, you know, it's a vast area. So imagine the amount, the effort of and the time the people will go to check all the vertical post installation, the torque modules, and all these aspects with with digitalization, with the artificial intelligence on top of it, scan the area, detect what has to be uh, installed per uh, per tasks because it will be like defined by the project schedule and see how it's like installed. Is the installation is correct or not? Because for example, in the, in the solar, if our vertical post is, uh, is not installed correctly, everything will be delayed. So these aspects of really critical milestones when it comes to quality, which pl it plays a great big role on the impact on the project as well as the life cycle when it comes to operations. This aspect, we are now working uh, tower like POC proof of concept to cover all these aspects. Now, at the end of the project construction, when we hand over to uh, to the operation maintenance, the with the digitalization, you will have you you will we are changing the approach during the construction from project wise to asset wise. So at the end, when you reach to the commissioning, you have an asset and you have all the data related to that particular asset, supplier, uh, uh, documents, power curves. Uh, quality inspection, all the history in one platform. And then from there, so you have one digital twin during construction, then you convert this digital twin into operations. And in operations here, you will go through the performance monitoring, predictive monitoring, again, another AI tools where to monitor the neighboring of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the panels to see the performance, compare the area, compare based on the uh, like expected performance with this with the with the ambient conditions dnis on all these aspects and the focus uh, angle etc so where with this chain we will have the full capability to really see and anticipate and you don't need to have people on site the idea is you might have a couple of plants you have one centralized uh, maintenance room to uh, to get the data hourly basis daily basis depending on on the needs and then from that you can directly plan the maintenance uh, to replace uh, a, uh, a uh, panel and, and so on, with the data being stored and uh, received on a daily basis. And again, drones here plays another role during the uh, operations to detect the heat. From there, you can even detect whether a, a solar a, a panel uh, is a defectuous, uh, yes or no, and you have the heat map of your entire area to, to decide, uh, to make the decision. So it will not, as we discussed, it will not replace the, the team. It's more about having the right tool to, make, to help you to make the decision and prioritize the work, the maintenance work activities, because you cannot work across the entire area, you will have to prioritize. And with this, all AI and digitalization will be able to prioritize and do the job uh, accordingly. Definitely, definitely. Thank you very much for that. So so from Scott, what, what's your what's your take on, on this particular topic now? Uh, I think the, the, the core part of the discussion is really about understanding the data. Um, you know, that, that's a fundamental number one. You know, within 3E, within the Synaptic Digital Twin platform, which is what I, I do every day, it's really about inciting uh, operational people, uh, department level. Everybody has a different need. Yeah, when, when we turn and log on our, our, our computers every day, it's, it's a different requirement in different parts of a business. So whether that's financial, whether it's performance improvement, whether it's yield improvement, whether it's actually improving the, the amount of efficiencies back to stabilizing grids, et cetera. That's really the key to, 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 to understanding data. And it's about cleaning the data. You know, there's good data, there's bad data. So that's the fundamental number one. The second side of that is about inciting uh, from, from, a, from a dashboard point of view, but also what do you do with that data? You know, we look at data from a granularity level down to five minute data uh, within certain platforms, digital twins, but it's also about, you know, the fundamentals of things like physics-based algorithms, you know, me, I'm, I'm a commercial guy, I'm not a, a, a super scientist, but behind all this, there are key fundamentals in life um, behind all these engines. But it's really about what you get out of it. Yeah, remove that heavy lifting, you know, improving efficiencies in our, in our manual processes and really work on the exceptions-based uh, rules rather than going to work and doing the same thing every day. So from 3 es point of view, it's really about you know, being more efficient, being scalable, you know, working remotely is, is what we all do every day. So, 
yeah, that that's really what uh, free eat is about. Uh, and, and, right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. So I think one of the the, the topics which uh, would uh, kind of go into hand in hand here is as we are becoming uh, more digitalized and we've already seen an evolution um, of the um, the solar assets uh, within the last 10 years. And as uh, clearly mentioned, we we are looking at very uh, large utility scale plants within the region of gigawatt scale. Now, obviously, uh, security is is an aspect of, of of key concerns now. So, I would like to understand from from Hiba now uh, your your take on the aspect of of the security of the data as we go into a more digital era era now. I fully agree, and this is especially for like energy sector. Uh, we consider the data as a classified data, especially in our region. So we need to protect the data. And now with the with the uh, the like Aqua approach is to create their own data lake, private uh, private cloud uh, in every country to to uh, to meet the um, country regulation, whether UAE, Saudi, etc. So uh, once we have we own our cloud private cloud let's say in the uh, in the in the country we we are able to develop and then uh, have the data stream to our servers or like azure or uh, any uh, a cloud supplier but the servers are in the region and this is like to be honest any any tool in the market if they use classified data they have to go toward this uh, approach. Uh, believe me, when I was doing uh, some um, uh, digital assessment in the uh, last uh, couple of months, uh, I had to automatically block uh, or reject uh, very important uh, tools. They are capable to cover all our business needs. However, the critical aspect, which data hosting and the capability to, to host their tool in uh, in KSA or in UAE was not available. So we had to uh, to to block them because at the end we are uh, we are part of the uh, like the uh, environment here and we are we are the ecosystem. And if you want to meet and then uh, have the ability to to follow the NCA regulations or uh, UAE regulations, we have to meet that. So uh, this is a critical point. We have a couple of uh, let's say cybersecurity uh, uh, approach. We uh, whether uh, firewalls, data diodes, especially when we want to remote monitor. Uh, solar plants. You know, this is the the vision of you know uh, of mo- mo- uh, operation operating and monitoring. Uh, solar plant would be remote monitoring, and for that, and sometimes you need to control, and you need to have a sec- full pledge of security, secured platform and communication. And this is what uh, Aqua Power is doing. And security is not only about data. Security is about accessing the plants. And with that, again, drones would be there, CCTV cameras with the, uh, we are working as well with a couple of uh, suppliers to, uh, to, dete- to, uh, to implement a, um, detectors for like a, a people where they, uh, they enter in restricted areas. This is another way of security. Security, you have the data security and you have the physical, physical security. And as well in the, in, the, in the market now, you see so many technology. I don't need to mention the names, but uh, we are working closely with a couple of proof, proof of concepts to cover all aspects of uh, security. Thank you very much, Hiba, on that. So from GP, GPM's perspective, what's your take and what are you seeing uh, being adapted within the market in terms of the, the data security um, from your, your uh, organization? Yeah, what we're seeing is a, is a continuous uh, increase in, uh, in needs to, to ensure that the data is, uh, is stored in, uh, in a safe way and uh, and we are continuously challenged to, to to improve and to raise the bar for uh, for ensuring that our customers uh, keep the trust in uh, in our solutions. Um, as I mentioned before, data again is 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 king. Therefore, for us, is is quite important that we can um, essentially follow the data across the whole value chain. Uh, we are lucky enough that we can follow it from the SCADA installation up to the monitoring and uh, and uh, revamping of, of assets. Uh, uh, so I think that for us is is, is quite a paramount uh, requirement and we are continuously focusing on that. Uh, adapting the solutions that we, we had in the past because uh, Green Power Monitor is a company that has been in the industry for quite a long time to the new needs. So what we are doing at the moment is uh, combining 
um, and getting out uh, an hybrid approach. So we used to have on-site um, uh, ways of storing data, and now we are combining those with uh, with the solutions that we have acquired in the in the cloud space. So we we are trying to get out in the market with with the best of the two worlds. We are there with the with the with the wind solutions uh, in the horizon that got launched uh, a few months ago. And in early 2024, we're gonna be launching the, the solar solution, combining multi-technology across solar, wind, and storage. Great, thank you. So do you see any any uh, differences? Uh, as we said, you know, we're, we're looking within a region of a gigawatt scale plants here in the region. So what what's your take on in, in regards to other markets and, and specifically within the, the GCC region? Uh, of the the data security is is are we following a trend of other markets or is it vice versa? Uh, I think I think what we've seen is that uh, we are influencing in a different way. Uh, the, the size matters, and uh, we are pushing the boundaries in the MENA region of uh, what's what's feasible. Because when you have to connect so many devices uh, into SCADA systems. I think that the MENA region is is pushing the boundaries in that in that respect. So uh, we are following, but we are at the same time leading. is is a continuously evolving industry, and therefore what we are seeing is that we are inheriting the developments that were made in other regions, but we are pushing uh, thanks to the size. I mean, the the blessing that we've got in the MENA region with uh, a high sources of irradiance is uh, is a is a is a blessing, but at the same time is a challenge. I would probably say so. Uh, we are pushing the boundaries even forward, and and then what will be developed for the MENA region will then be deployed in other regions because I'm sure that other regions will follow. Thank you very much for that. So. If we look at the Middle East, uh, the smart grid uh, networks uh, expected to grow from 2.5 billion to over 5 billion from 2020 to 2027. So these are already um, uh, trends that we're seeing within the market itself and specifically within the GCC itself. So, Scott, what's your uh, perspective on, on this particular topic, on the uh, aspect of how, how things are, are moving forward and, and how you see it differ from the UK and within the region of, of the Middle East? Yeah, um, I think we're, we're in a position in the Middle East where it's very much an immature market. It's, it's you know, looking at what's, what's available uh, around, around the world is, is key. Um, understanding, you know, from a technology point of view, um, acquiring the best, uh, whether that's hardware or software, software is, is also key. Um, there's other markets like the UK, which are, is very mature, very, very old, uh, very much um, driven by policy, and, and that takes a lot of time to, to, to sort of uh, uh, change, you know, 10 years plus to, to get any connection to, to the grid is a, is a normal way of life in UK and, and, and mainly Europe as well. So with that in mind, I, th I think everybody's looking at the, the, the MEA region and saying, okay, let, let's, let's work on what we, we do well, but try and do it better for, for tomorrow's world. And, and I think the, the Middle East especially is, is taking ownership of that, understanding it, and, and doing things today and tomorrow for, for, for a more inclusive, more performance-related, uh, better world. You know, and when you talk about gigawatts, you know, UK generally, you know, our biggest plant and solar is 373 megawatts so so that's just the scale of a you know and that's online february next year so so scalability point of view total different completely different scalability but precisely it's still about managing the assets so whether you have one solar array or one million solar arrays anywhere in the world it's still about the performance improvement and, and that's really what it's about and one key thing before i hand back over to you is it's really about the data so Today, you know, we all talk about the cloud. We all talk about, you know, all these cloud services and things like that. But within 3E, you can actually go to the endpoint in a data center and, and see your rack with all your data within it. Because ultimately, it's, it's not 3E's data. It's the, our client's data. You know, it's a data warehouse, as we all, we all understand the terminology. So there is also an endpoint. So when you look at in-country or in-region, um, 3E facilitates that everywhere in the world to put a data center uh, in, in respective of, of, of clients needs anywhere. So, yeah. So I think that leads me on to kind of the, the next kind of um, uh, point of view on, on how to clean that data and how to really action that, that data itself. 
So, Scott, what's your your, your view on that, on, on the data that is coming uh, available within the kind of dig, dig, digital era? How, how, what's your point on that? Yeah, so so cleaning data is, is something which is automated within within our world uh, in, inside 3E. Um, it's it's critical because we are very much hardware agnostic. You know, it doesn't matter whether it's a, a inverter portal, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a, da- a certain data locker or a certain SCADA system. That's that's the that's the key part of of what we we do, and because we're agnostic, um, that, that's also a, an important uh, message to understand. It's it's really clients data it's really cleaning the data automatically nobody nobody knows you know ultimately with, with the timestamp what's gone wrong um but but from a free e from a big sp- physics based uh, algorithms we understand that and that's really the machine learning tool uh and and the engine behind behind what we do every day Definitely. So from, from Huawei's side, we, we've already seen the, the, the data is key, obviously, to develop into the next uh, features, etc. So algorithms from that data is the important aspect to kind of really um, gain to the next era of the, the, ne- the, the new features, such as IV curve, um, diagnostic down to module level data or even string level data. Now, obviously, in gigawatt scale plants, uh, do we need that data? What's the importance of that? So from GPM, what's your take on, on cleaning that data and, and having what type of data available on, on the plants? Yeah, I would probably say, uh, repeat what I mentioned at the beginning. I said that data is the fuel of uh, digitalization. I would probably add that data is the is the is king. But not any data, um, because uh, as we have uh, have heard, uh, I mean, uh, bad data could be even a liability because you have to store them, so pay for the storage space, and should and no one breaks in, and therefore you you might liable with uh, with your customers. Um, so good data. When I say good, good data, I mean data is uh, that is classified according to recognized taxonomy. So we we have spent a lot of effort in. Uh, adopting IC and the orange button uh, taxonomy in a way that uh, we know that data is always classifiable. It's always uh, up to the standard and is uh, usable straight away. Um, and this is a re- fundamental requirement for uh, the enablement of uh, AI and machine learning. When, um, when we started deploying uh, some of the many algorithms that we've got on, um, on, the, on the machine learning side, uh, what we realized is that the having the right data that could help us deploying the algorithms was uh, was the key param- and paramount uh, factor that we had to 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 deal with. Um, we went uh, and uh, developed algorithms that will enable us to automatically clean data. So using natural language processing, uh, which is uh, a useful branch of AI um, to essentially assign and categorize data in, a, in an automatic way, and and that was a was a breakthrough because uh, using uh, using something that is automatic, uh, you can use uh, cosine similarity or a word movers distance to vectorize the data and then assign some meaning to the data in a way that then uh, things that were assigned the early days or that continuously are assigned by customers according to their needs in a very flexible way then get transformed into something that is uh, taxonomically uh, relevant. And that's not relevant just for us. Going back to the discussion we had about the difference between digitalization and digitization, we are opening up our gates to ensure that more and more customers can use what the work that we have done. Uh, we've done that as DMV in the maritime industry, and we are doing that in the renewable en- energy industry. So ensuring that everyone talks the same language is a, one of our ambitions. So that data is portable, not if you are only working with GPM, but if you are going to be working with other with other partners around the world. Great, thank you for that. So. The, the, the kind of the next area is let's look at some example cases potentially of where we have uh, come across this. Um, so, Mohammed, what's your take on on um, cases where you've 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 seen or witnessed um, the digital era um, and and the AI, AI uh, take into effect within your uh, organization? Okay, um, let's go back to the construction where you digitalize the object. Okay, you give it like a birth certificate, which is the geolocation. 
okay? Now, if you come to the commissioning phase or to the handover phase, you need to give it an ID. And for example, I can give you, uh, I'm giving you now an, an example, particular example into the three phases. During the commissioning, what you can do with the digital tool, for example, scan the serial number of the PV panel on site with the mobile app that's related to the same CAD geolocated in the portal. And also you can onboard all the other relevant uh, testing, EL testing, uh, flash testing, whatever you have, you can also onboard it on the same history of this object, which is, for example, the, the PV panel. So during the on M, if you are uh, having this digitalization, if, uh, if you did it before, then you are prepared and having good foundation for a smart one time. For example, you have scanned the serial numbers of the, of the PV module, and then you did the thermographic inspection of the plant during uh, the handover of the one time, and you found out like a concentrated uh, thermal defects in one zone, okay? Because we are not a real-time monitoring. You, you need to, to uh, interact with the tool to have the data. So you did like a thermographic inspection, of a plan that was digitalized before, where you have scanned the serial number without drone, where we did a lot of uh, things manually on site, okay, at the beginning for one time to give it again a birth certificate and ID. Then when you see that all the, the panels are, the defects are focused in, in one area, in one zone, you are a little bit worried why are they there? So if you go on site, maybe take some visual inspection. With the mobile app, visual inspection is also like, it's a picture that you take, geolocated to the object. Maybe you can find, I don't know, uh, a backsheet problem or anything. So the concentration of the PV panels of the thermal defects in one area will give you the idea to go to digital twin and maybe filter uh, all these panels based on the batch. Batch is a part of the serial number that you have uh, scanned before. So, I mean, using this, all data in the smart one um, through the batch you can know like I, I think all the attendees knows what the batch is it's like the family of the, this PV panel that has been manufactured same time on the same pallet etc through this process and uh, and digital twin you might find that there is a backsheet problem related to this patch it means a manufacturing problem and you are prepared uh, having a good foundation for a warrant claim Warrant claim can be for all the PV panels related to the same batch. And this you can also relate to other uh, components on site. So this is a, like a, a particular example and how uh, this can be used uh, uh, on site. Great. Thank you very much for that. So from a, a, a plant perspective and, and a developer, Hiba, what's your take on, 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 uh, on this? Okay, so actually I second very well uh, Mohammed and uh, Gusev, like all of uh, the team spoke uh, correctly. So to, to Mohammed's point, uh, the batch is critical. And this actually, if we follow the same approach that we start from the during construction to be digitalized, we know exactly that this will help us if we have multiple suppliers, not even for the batch, if we have multiple suppliers and then we can really uh, do a revision of the vendor management qualification. So this to con con complete your chain, and then from there we really we and we don't need to go to the operation maintenance because some these exercises can be done in the commissioning. We list that, and then we know that moving forward as a new, with the new projects, we should avoid the supplier if we have this digitalized processes because any new development of a new plant, we we get the lesson learned from all the previous uh, similar uh, uh, technologies. And then how, what was the challenges? You, either during the commissioning, the uh, during construction, commissioning, uh, and operations. If, for example, we have a repetitive failure for a transformer, this means that we have an issue with this supplier we need to avoid, or even a switch, or even a, a, even a small aspect that can break uh, and uh, uh, how we call uh, stop the production and the reproduction and impact our uh, our uh, our commitment or like what, like a, a purchase agreement with the uh, with the uh, with the grid. So this is is correct. And one point I want to discuss about like when you talk about data, it's a very valid point, especially during the uh, monitoring, garbage in, garbage out. It's it's a clear. And for that. The, the the core is really data cleansing. And this is where I see the biggest um, area of, of opportunity for data scientists to do to, to do the, this data analysis and data processing. And for that, like I, I'm not into 
IoT technology in terms of like uh, uh, the algorithm that uh, was mentioned by Gusebe. Gusebe, but, uh, but the approach is, is correct. And then uh, the first thing when we, when when I was in uh, in uh, leading the MPC, the first thing that we need to check if the sensor is correct or yes or not. You know, this is the, the critical aspect. And so many cases were suggest about a sensor, sensor issue, not a real, a real case. And this where the, the algorithm that will be put, where they're comparing the neighboring uh, uh, assets or redundant uh, uh, sensors to define and have an average and, and so on. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tremendous effort. Uh, and the AI will play the the biggest role to avoid these manual work and having the uh, the challenges to 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 uh, to get the information in a, in a, in the right way. Because if I don't have the right data, whatever I do after, like even the recommendation, it happened to us when when we share recommendation whether high vibe. This is mainly for uh, uh, for wind or uh, conventional or even like wind where we have like high vibration. It's simply it was a sensor, and your 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 theory is completely deviated from reality, and uh, this is it will always be there, especially right. when you, you have that. hundreds of uh, the sensors across the the uh, the plant. So we already see uh, within kind of the, the GCC region itself, we've got um, Diwa already adopting to the VPP plants already. Um, have you got any uh, cases, Hiba, that you could kind of uh, elaborate on in regards to plants that potentially already uh, digitalized or, or in, a, in a manner where um, are successfully deployed um, in, in a digital area? Yes. So uh, from a, from a, let me say, from a operation maintenance, we already have, when I left, like I'm still there, we have around 15 power plants, like uh, across the all technologies. We have around seven PV plants already connected. Diwa, like we and Aqua and Diwa, we have a couple of, uh, like we are developers together. So we have a couple of plants. We, like Aqua and Diwa are shareholders in the uh, in the same plant, whether Noor Energy, whether uh, like Diwa 5 and, and all these aspects. So we have this capability and we have the full uh, predictive and performance monitoring, uh, both of them predictive uh, to uh, when it comes to inverters, transformers, and even trackers and performance, which really to ensure that we are meeting our uh, generation. Uh, out. So we have that. Now we are working even with, uh, with the, uh, to enhance and put ahead, and this might be my, uh, currently my role, to digitalize the process during the construction. So for that, since I'm coming from operations, it will be easy to understand what like the digitalization to be done in construction. So the investment I need to put in the construction phase. So when we operate the plant, I have the full data in the right way with the right um, information that it will be there. So uh, from a operation maintenance, we have enough uh, uh, let's say industrialized solutions in, uh, and we are operating this way. And it's not only for that, we have a couple of aspects when we talk about like operation, um, predictive and performance monitoring, it's the value chain after that. So uh, maintain and then, uh, you know, when we talk about logistics and, um, you know, the uh, what we call fair part, uh, uh, the spare parts, uh, you know, warehouse uh, capability, you know, uh, monitor the the uh, spare parts needs. This is a the continuous chain with the with the uh, with the solar uh, uh, like operation maintenance activities. Thank so we have a couple of sites. Yep. I think before we kind of close off the session, I would just kind of uh, highlight one one topic. What what do we do with the the recovering of, of performance performance data which potentially has been lost um, uh, during the kind of either construction stage or during the monitoring and O and M stage? So I'd like to get the take on that from Scott and and also from GPM on that. So Scott, first, if you could just expand on on that particular topic. So when we talk about uh, data or cleaning of data or missing data, um, this is really about the machine learning and behaviors of assets. So, so from an analytical point of view, within a normal digital twin environment, um, it, norm it normally rectifies and, and simulates in real time exactly the behavior of that particular asset or assets in a, in a, in a region, as an example. Um, but understanding machine learning is very much about a time-based series 
you know, whether that asset has been installed today or last month, last year, etc. It's really understanding that from, 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 from our point of view, it's, it's analyzing, simulating, and really highlighting whether that's actionable alarms, as an example, preventable maintenance, etc., in, in a digital environment. So from a dashboard point of view, it's, it's giving that insight. Um, and, and key to all of this is, is as, as we all say, and we've said for nearly an hour, it's, it's about trusting the data, you know. But that's the, that's the key in all of this because it's 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 really fundamental to digitization in any form. Um, and from Free E's point of view, it's it's really making making sure that data is, is acceptable uh, every minute of every day of every week of every month of every year. And that's Definitely. that's how it's taken up. So G, G, GP, uh, M, what's your yes. uh, you know uh, <clears throat> perspective on 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 that data loss and how uh, that could potentially affect? Um, the, the assets um, during that kind of missing period. Yeah, I mean, there are many ways to to tackle this uh, this problem. Either from a software point of view, so using uh, artificial intelligence with the hind casting techniques, which is something that uh, we constantly do and deliver on uh, on the monitoring side, but also on the resource forecasting side, where uh, if you are missing some data coming from from the resources, you can then collate and uh, run something that is called an ensemble to, to regain control of the forecasting. I will also mention that um, for us, it's probably a little bit easier because we are suppliers of also hardware and, um, and that enables us to uh, handle the situation in an easier way. So the, an hybrid approach to, to storing data is, uh, is something that give you, gives us an advantage because uh, from uh, com by combining the on-site storage of data plus the cloud solutions, we have uh, lower chances of losing any data that are coming from our customers. So I'll probably say that there are two sides to the to the, to to this question and to this problem. One is hardware and uh, how you store and save data, and the other one is hind casting, so soft and uh, and uh, AI to to solve this problem with hind casting. Great, thank you for that. So. Kind of to kind of conclude the session, there's a, couple, a few questions uh, arised from uh, the the the, the, um, the listeners today. So I think uh, it comes back to yourself um, in regards to the specific challenges uh, and considerations when implementing AI on the solar projects and the asset managements uh, in the MENA region, and what trends and, and uh, are foresee uh, in the integration of AI technologies within the renewable energy sector in the near future. Uh, well, we we are seeing a lot of trends, and uh, we are spending a lot of effort in uh, research and development. Uh, so, predicting what's happening to the inverters, which is something that is quite close to uh, to your business, it's uh, it's something that we are spending a lot of effort on. So, expected power of, the, of inverter based on artificial neural networks. Um, another one is uh, predictive maintenance of inverters. So. We, we model the normal behaviors using uh, autoencoders and uh, self-organizing maps. And, uh, and this uh, will help us predicting uh, what the potential inverter failures are going to be. Another thing that we are doing is uh, focusing on inverter anomaly detection. So what we do is uh, we use, again, artificial intelligence to identify previously unseen operational conditions in solar inverters. Um, and then robust parameter reconstruction. So going back to whether you're missing or not data, we, we are capable of uh, predicting whether data is missing and reconstructing by combining uh, several sources of data. Um, we look at health monitoring of solar PV plants. So we identify up to 15, 15 uh, neighboring plants that are performing in a certain way and, and uh, essentially identify the outliers, again, based on AI and machine learning. And last but not least, long-term degradation of solar PV plants. So uh, estimated by modeling the plant's power production uh, as a function, of course, of the environmental condition. And then we calculate the degradation rate uh, and then uh, we try and identify if there are any anomalies or if, uh, if something is happening uh, to specific plants. So those are the areas where we are expanding in terms of research and development. We are leaning on, uh, on DMB, uh, which is a much bigger organization um, than, uh, than uh, Green Power Monitor. 
Uh, we've got something like 2,500, 3,000 uh, renewable experts in DMV in energy systems, and then we've got dedicated teams that uh, uh, work on research and development uh, full stop without any commercial insights. And uh, we're leaning on both those uh, uh, those teams to, to develop these, um, um, these new technologies alongside my team that is full-time dedicated to uh, advanced technologies and, um, and advanced analytics. Great. So I think that leads on to a very similar uh, question in regards to the health of uh, and, and minimizing the failures that would typically occur. I think, Hiba, you did uh, touch on that earlier on. And if you could just elaborate uh, from the question uh, from, from the audience today on the, uh, the predict, uh, predicting the data uh, and the health uh, to minimize the system failures. Yes, so for that, this is what we we uh, we launched in, in, in NOMAC. Let me talk like my my because I was leading uh, this uh, this implementation earlier. In NOMAC, what is in order to start with that, we need to define what are the the failures that we are looking for. You know, we create this we call it like a blueprints, the diagnostic failures that we are looking for, and then for every failure that we are like for a for a solar is a is a straightforward the list of failures that we we are going we 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 uh, we face, and then from there we define the the uh, how we call it the sensors like associated to it to to toward to give it an indication if we are going to that uh, failure or not. So this approach that we that we work uh, uh, with uh, in NOMAC to define the like machine learning, defining create the pattern for uh, for these sensors together to define if any deviation out of these sensors this, this means that we are going through a failure whether inverter transformer and then the trackers and then of course on top of it we are working to have uh, regular drones um, uh, screening to uh, to to detect the heat, the concentration heat on the on the panels, and so on. It all starts with the the uh, the fleet approach that we have, defining the list of repetitive um, failures that we are uh, facing, and then work toward to define the the pattern, uh, the baseline pattern for them, and then proceed. This is what Giuseppe as well uh, Giuseppe mentioned, how they are the based on from digital twin, define the uh, diagnostics and then uh, monitor using the uh, AI uh, algorithm. Great. Thank you for that, Eva. So just to kind of, we've just got a couple of minutes left now. I just want to fire that over to Scott as well. What's your take on that, um, on, on predictive maintenance um, and minimizing the, the system failures uh, occurring on plants? So, so from um, an analysis point of view and from a digital twin point of view, it's really about understanding all the way down to string level the, the behavior of those assets you know there's from, from a digital twin point of view we have 21 categories of which 13 are recoverable as an example of, of a platform and it's really that insight to say okay we understand there's a failure but but what is the failure you know analyzing that core data that core behavior of that asset is something which any digital platform needs to do to give insight to to recover that potential loss and, and a call to action. So, so that is really the key of a digital platform is really from an operational point of view, it's a call to action. And from an analytical point of view, it's really about understanding the data, understanding the data, trusting the data and pre preventing that over time in the future. So when we talk about recoverable losses, um, that could be soiling, that could be shading, that could be deviations uh, as, as a few examples um, in everyday life of a, of a solar asset. But yeah, it's really about inciting the user or user groups to a call to action. And that's something what Digital Twin is there to do every day. Thank you, Scott. And just lastly, Mohammed, uh, just to kind of uh, finish off the last 30 seconds, what's your uh, last point of view on that? Um, from our perspective, we are not a real-time monitoring. I mean, if you have the right foundation from the beginning and you are not lazy because, you know, any task on site can be also postponed. If you did all the digitalization of all the components from day one and you took all the needed visual inspection and you are doing uh, like a condition monitoring, correct condition monitoring and uh, having an IEC thermographic inspection uh, on the right time, I think uh, you are ensuring for sure... Uh, a quality of power uh, and uh, smarter one in the future. 
I just want to uh, answer uh, someone's question that I really find interesting, which is the VR, because I think this is uh, just came to my mind. As we are talking about uh, the mobile app application uh, and the uh, portal, the VR is a very good uh, future technology. I think the other future technology are the autonomous drones that you can just uh, control remotely. That would be also uh, great. But also the VR, the VR will also re will digitalize the digitalization. I mean, if you are on site with your mobile app talking to your colleague in the office, seeing the portal, if he will use the VR, what do you call this, the VR glasses, he can be with you on the same uh, site and also touch the digitalization again. Yes, so this is a future technology that will, will happen also uh, in the near future. Yeah, to Thank add, just much. to add on that, Aqua and uh, is starting with that and NOMAC to, to have this uh, initiative in Jiwa. Without it's avatars. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right, guys, thank you very much all for, for joining today. Um, I'll hand it back over to Hind, and uh, we all thank everybody for joining online and listening in. You're all uh, welcome to reach out to us um, uh, after the session for further more uh, deep dive into the topic of digitalization and AI. Indeed, Take thank care. you so much. Thank you, Rizwan, fantastic job. Thank you to the over 100 uh, attendees that we had here today. Um, and thank you to all of the speakers present uh, and to Solar Abek, our partner uh, on this webinar and uh, most of our webinars. So thank you guys. Uh, we look forward to seeing you on our next one. Thanks. Thank you, Have pleasure. A nice day.